Now, going from that, I'd like you to think about a value fun or value functions. And a definition of it here is the value function of V of X, where in this case, X has an, uh, in the traditional, in a traditional notation is underlying to mean it's a vector of all the possible things that may go into your value. So if you're thinking about, oh, I'd like to buy a new car, you might want to think about its size, its cost, its economy, in terms of fuel economy, its color, uh, whether or not it has a convertible or not, which may be important to you, or space for carrying things like you want a van. So all the X's that make up the value for this particular thing. So the value function is a means of ranking the relative performance for an, of the X's for an individual uh, for a bundle of consequences. That is all the measures of attributes of it. So, and it is a non-quantitative form of utility function. And it is a ranking uh, that you can say, this is better than that, but it's not that three of those are worth 10 of the others. It's not a cardinal function. So the general idea, the typical, the base idea is that you have some, oh, I've drawn it on the horizontal scale, a benefit, and you have a measure of preference. So if I look on the left-hand side, that we see that if I have a, if I don't have any, just having some can be important to me. And then if I have the more, the rough for each other unit may be less and less. And we can think about that in terms of the unit preference uh, for each additional unit of benefits. And it's this kind of general shape known typically as diminishing marginal utility, where the idea is simply that the uh, unit value is less as we get uh, more of it. And this is a typical form that often exists. And in much of uh, general discussions of it, it is sort of thought of, this is the common thing, diminishing marginal utility um, at a point. And while this is a very common uh, shape or a description of the value functions, thinking of it as the most likely one, it can be very misleading. And that's what I'd like to discuss with you just a little bit more. So, uh, but let me illustrate this. So let's imagine that we are uh, about to go to lunch. I know that some of you out there in Cyberland may be more thinking about breakfast or uh, supper, but um, if you're hungry, uh, you might value uh, one serving of your favorite uh, uh, or the available food, a hamburger, a salad, uh, a soup, um, whatever it might happen to be. Um, so one serving might be good, to, well, that might be nice. Maybe I didn't have enough enough the first time around. Uh, three, well, um, possibly. And then we all may have had the experience of being at a family gathering and uh, uh, your favorite aunt or cook or whatever says, oh dear, sweetheart, I haven't seen you for so long. Um, please have yet another one. I made this especially for you because you liked it and you groan and say, okay. Um, I will have it, but you really didn't want it. So all it is, I'm trying to suggest to you a common experience that yes, there are things for which we have definitely have diminishing marginal value for it. So um, that establishes a hope or indicates that. But does it always apply? Can we think of exceptions? And actually the, the ex exceptions are that uh, they're very common. So for example, critical mass. So a thing might be only valuable if I have enough of it to be able to do something with it. Uh, you might think of this as a nuclear reaction or power plant of that sort, but it might be that uh, it may be, do I have enough people to uh, mount a, a uh, a team for soccer or something, um, that I need to have enough 
around or resources around to make something out of it. So like, the idea of critical mass may be that the individual pieces aren't terribly valuable at the beginning, but when you have enough of them, ah, now I can really do something with it. Um, another idea is the network connections. Uh, we see this a lot in the, in the internet age, is that uh, the more that you have of the connections, the more valuable it is that having a, um, a, uh, having a, a, a system, say Slack or whatever it is, it might be, that if there's nobody else on it, it's not terribly useful to you. It becomes more and more useful as there are more people on it and you can have more connectivity so that the connectivity gives you more and so that it's more and more valuable. Uh, threshold, this is one that is absolutely pervasive. So in so many cases, uh, the uh, value of something is only good enough if, for example, you meet uh, the, um, the threshold. So if you're trying to pass a test, for example, a driver's test in Massachusetts, as I remember, ha you have to have a 70 on its test. So yeah, I'd be uh, having, going from having, um, four questions right to five questions right. Yeah, that's better, it makes you feel better. Um, from going from five to six, if, you know, I was close, maybe I'll get it next time. But what really counts, what really gives value is going from six to seven, from not passing to passing. And uh, we can, do it in more generally, if we're thinking about delivering products, we are we don't, not passing a test in the something graded, but we're trying to match or beat competition. That is, uh, it doesn't pay to say, oh, well, my product's good. It's only 10% uh, less effective than my competitions. Well, people will notice and will not be buying your product very much or won't be valuing. You can't sell it at a high enough price to make a good money on it. But if you're 10% above, if you're above the threshold of the competition, and of course it isn't a very precise thing, but if you're above the competition, you put yourself in a much better position so that the value of your performance may be start off, a, you know, maybe increase as you go higher performance, but it can really increase if you beat out the competition and are seen to beat out the competition and puts you in a completely different space so that we can observe that there are all kinds of issues where they are um, uh, critical mass. So, well, I really wanted to take the pot time here to have everybody stop and get a hold of this question and to recognize that the, um, their, uh, this notion of uh, diminishing marginal value or utility, while very common, is in fact not a do necessarily a dominant feature and that uh, increased margin utility, whether it's threshold or network or competition or however you wish to phrase it, is a very common and realistic um, aspect of our, uh, of our pro professional and other lives.